Hey everyone, CE Tech Dude here. Today we're going to look at the Pixel 3 to see if it's still worth buying in 2020. Let's get started. The Pixel 3 isn't available to purchase new, but you can get this phone for relatively cheap on eBay, Facebook, or if you're feeling stabby, Craigslist. I got mine for $200 and it was in good condition. $200 is cheaper than you can find the Pixel 3a new, which is the lower end version of the Pixel 3. So it's up to you whether you want a new phone or if you can settle for a refurb or a used phone. The Pixel 3 launched in 2018, so it's about to be two years old. But just because it's two years old doesn't mean it can't keep up with or surpass phones that have launched more recently. This is the non-XL version of the Pixel 3 family and it has a screen size of 5.5 inches. It has a 1080p OLED screen and in my opinion, it still looks fantastic. Colors really pop and black levels are great in this phone. Viewing angles are also great. I also like that this phone has a built-in dark theme to really utilize that OLED screen. Now it isn't 90 hertz or 120 hertz, but it still performs just fine in my opinion. The front of this phone looks great and still looks plenty modern compared to newer phones. It has a screen to body ratio of almost 79%, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it still looks plenty good to me. And I would gladly sacrifice screen real estate for the dual front facing speakers like we see here. It has dual eight megapixel cameras up front, one of which is wide angle to capture more in the frame when taking selfies. I will go over the cameras a little later in the video though. The Pixel 3 comes in either 64 gigabytes or 128 gigabytes of storage, and sadly doesn't feature micro SD card expansion. 64 gigabytes goes quickly when installing apps and games, or when you are taking lots of pictures and videos with this camera, which you'll definitely want to do. I would definitely recommend getting the 128 gigabyte version of this phone if you are considering picking one up still. Moving on to the back of the phone, which does feature wireless charging, which is pretty awesome. You'll find a fingerprint sensor and a single rear camera with LED flash. The fingerprint sensor unlocks this phone very quickly and I have no issues with it at all. Very, very fast. The back is made of glass, which has a nice matte finish that I quite like. It feels almost rubbery to me. This is the not pink version of this phone. I'm secure enough in my manhood to carry around a slightly pink phone, but also please don't make fun of me. <laughs> there is unfortunately no face unlock, but to me, the fingerprint sensor is my method of choice anyways, especially if I have a mask on and not because of COVID, I'm Batman. On the back of the phone, you also have that single rear camera. This one is a 12 megapixel camera. Now we all know that pixels are known for the outstanding image quality that they have. And I'm happy to report that it still holds up. We'll provide you guys with some pictures and videos later in the video. The camera app on this phone is quite nice, very clear layout and has a lot of features. You can take front portrait photos that also work when you switch to the wide angle camera. Night side also works when using the wide angle camera and the front facing camera. The front camera video quality is only 1080p, 30 frames per second, but it still looks plenty good in my opinion. Switching to the rear camera unlocks some more modes. You still get that excellent portrait mode and night mode, but you can also do photosphere, panorama, and some cool augmented reality stuff. With either camera, you can quickly hold down the shutter button to record a quick video. Overall, I really like the cameras and the camera up on this phone and they still hold up and even surpass a lot of the new flagship phones and most, if not all, of the mid-range phones. And that's even though you don't get the option for other lenses, such as wide angle and telephoto, like you do on some other phones. The rear camera does record up to 4K 30 frames per second, and in my opinion, video quality is really, really nice. I actually recorded my Red Hydrogen 1 video using this phone. So if you wanna see what the 4K footage looks like in an in-depth look, take a look at that video. Now let's talk about specs, baby. This phone features a Snapdragon 845 processor and four gigs of RAM. The processor is still very good in my opinion. I have never had any complaints about performance while using this phone. The four gigs of RAM is kind of disappointing, but the only time you'll really notice that is if you are gaming or multitasking and need to switch to another app. You will most likely have to relaunch the app since it doesn't have enough memory to keep a lot of apps open at once, but that won't happen very often. The good thing about Pixels though, is that Google optimizes these phones like crazy. So even with a slightly older processor, this phone has zero issues in day-to-day -day use for me. I think it feels just as fast as today's flagship phones, in my opinion. I did do some benchmarking with this phone with Geekbench 5, and it gets a really good score of 484 on single core and 1898 on multi-core. It just goes to show you that the Snapdragon 845 still has a lot of life left in it. Benchmarks may not mean a lot to you, so run it on your own device first to see what it gets and you can compare it to this. As I mentioned, I use Geekbench 5 for this test. Another one of the seemingly limitations of this device is the battery specs. Coming in at just a hair under 3,000 mAh, the battery may seem pretty paltry on paper. But as I mentioned before, 
this phone is crazy optimized and Android 10 and up have some nice battery optimizations built in. So I can easily make it through the day with this phone without worry. Now sure, I wish this had a bigger battery in it, but overall I'm still very happy with the battery life. Wireless charging and fast charging are included in case you do need more power. Now true to form with Pixel phones, this phone runs the latest and greatest flavor of Android. It actually just got upgraded to Android 11 this week. Android 11 adds some nice things like built-in screen recording, a revamped power menu for when you hold down the power button, and some nice tweaks to notifications. Plus some of my favorite features are only found on Pixel phones, like the call screening, where you can send a call to the Google Assistant to get info on who's calling, to let you know if you really wanna take the call. It also has built-in transcribing. So when you're watching a video, you can have it automatically generate subtitles for you locally on the phone. It's actually a pretty neat feature and I really like using it. Google has promised support for this phone until October 2021, so you can expect this to get at least Android 12. Beyond that though, they make no promises. But with Pixel phones, this will still be running Android 12 before a lot of flagships even get Android 11. Just the way it is. This phone also has built-in NFC to use Google Pay and anything else that you want to use NFC for. And now I do want to go over the rest of this phone with you. It's a beautiful phone in my opinion. The power button and volume rockers are on the right side of the phone. And the power button has a different accent color, which is a nice touch in my opinion. You can double press the power button to launch the camera. And I haven't noticed any lag when doing that. You can also twist the phone to switch to the front camera or switch, twist back to switch to the rear. Besides that, there isn't much to the design of this phone. It's just a svelte and thin rectangle, but it looks really good in my opinion. On the bottom, you get the USB-C port and SIM card tray. No expandable storage, as I mentioned earlier, and no headphone jack, which is lame. Now, one cool thing about this phone is that it's squeezable, but uh, aren't we all? When you squeeze it, it will bring up the Google Assistant, even when the phone is locked. I found this on Google. Overall, the design of this phone still holds up beautifully, and it looks really good in my opinion. This phone also packs in IP68 dust and water resistance, which is a huge plus in my opinion. Using this phone, as I mentioned earlier, is still plenty fast. And I want to give a few real world examples. Opening apps like Google Chrome, web browsing, all work instantly. I really have experienced no lag. And this phone also still works really well for social media. Instagram, Woof, Snapchat, you know, everything works great. And I love that this phone has dual front facing speakers. When you're watching videos on YouTube or Netflix or Hulu or HBO Max, um, they work great. Now, it would be better if this phone had a headphone jack. Did I mention that I really like headphone jacks? The Pixel 3a does have one though. So if you're looking at the Pixel 3 line and you want the headphone jack, get the Pixel 3a. I did want to give you guys some real world video examples. So this is me walking down the street, just uh, you know, living the dream, recording on the front facing camera. This is 1080p 30 frames a second using the built-in microphone. This phone does have optical image stabilization and electronic image stabilization. So hopefully it's pretty stabilized. As you can see, it's a pretty cloudy day. So yeah, just keep that in mind. But like I said, this is the front facing camera at 1080p 30 frames per second on the Pixel 3. Oh hey, it's me again. Now we're walking down the street again still. We're at 4K 30 frames per second on the rear camera. It's still a cloudy day because it's the same day, uh, same time pretty much. Just, I just flipped the camera around and now I'm recording and talking to you. So 4K 30 FPS rear camera. Hopefully it's pretty stabilized. I just want to show you guys what it looks like. Hope you like it. So my friends, it comes down to this. Is this phone still a good buy in 2020? If you can find a 120 gigabyte version of this phone or its big brother, the Pixel 3 XL at a good price, preferably around the $250 mark, then absolutely. Pixel 3 works amazingly. And with another year of software support, plus being fully unlocked for any carrier, it's a no brainer. I would also probably recommend getting this phone over the Pixel 3a, unless you really need the headphone jack. You're getting a better processor and IP68 water resistance in this phone compared to the Pixel 3a. Whatever you choose, I do not think you'll be disappointed in the Pixel 3 line of phones, even in 2020. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to see more content just like this. Have a good day, my friends, and God bless. See you next time.